Let's look at guided problem 11.6. Hit that door. You stand in front of a door. There's the door of inertia MD. Okay. And a width uh, LD as it swings towards you. So it's swinging towards you with a rotational speed omega i. You throw a ball of inertia MB and speed VB toward the door so that it strikes the door perpendicularly. Okay, so there's a strikes the door perpendicularly at a distance D from the hin hinged edge as shown in the overhead view. Then after it, it, it strikes the door, the ball bounces directly back towards you with one-fourth its original speed. Okay, so you throw it, boom, comes back. So the door is moving, you throw it, it hits the door perpendicular and it moves back. Okay, what is the final rotational speed omega f of the door after the collision. Okay, so how are we going to attack this problem? First of all, please try it. As I always say in these problems, please try it. See what you don't know, what you know. So the way we're going to attack this is we are going to use conservation of angular momentum. Okay, conservation of angular momentum. Okay, so this is this is our system. Guys, if you if you get this, it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, if you know how to work with uh, linear momentum, which you, we already do know, then this is uh, it's not it's really not such a big deal to jump from linear momentum to angular momentum. Okay, so Linear momentum, sorry, angular momentum is conserved. So we're dealing with something that's rotating. So we, that's why we're looking at angular momentum. Delta L equals zero. This is the angular momentum of the system. That means that the change in the angular momentum doesn't is zero. The, the change in angular momentum of the system is zero. What does this mean? It means that delta L of the ball plus delta L of the door is zero. Now, this is the thing which is perhaps a bit not so intuitive, um, is when we think of angular momentum, we automatically think of something that is able to rotate, like the door. That's easy to understand. This thing is rotating. It's got some angular momentum. But the ball, even though it's traveling in a straight line, it too has some angular momentum. And the angular momentum is given by, remember momentum is mv, but for angular momentum, you multiply this momentum by a lever arm, r perpendicular. So, <clears throat> this ball has a certain angular momentum that is based, first of all, on its linear momentum, mv, but then you multiply it by a perpendicular distance. So the further this guy's away uh, from that axis of rotation, the larger this angular momentum uh, it possesses. So the closer the closer it would be to this axis of rotation, the smaller its angular momentum would be. So even though an object is moving in a straight line, it can cause. Um, it can impart a large, or sorry, it can impart an angular momentum even though it's moving in a straight line. Okay? Then, so this is the idea behind the angular momentum for the ball. And then we also have angular momentum for the door, which is given by I omega. I omega. That is your rotational inertia and that is your angular velocity. And you need to go and check in the textbook that these two can be derived from one another, right? This is equal to m r squared. Um, and 
you basically derive what this equation from there. Okay, so just make sure that you, you can go and check that out. All right, so <clears throat> let's move back to here, conservation of angular momentum. This would be L ball final minus L ball initial. This would be L door final minus L door initial equals zero. Now it's important that we choose a direction um, that's positive, a rotational direction. So you can choose uh, counterclockwise as positive or you can choose clockwise as, as positive. It's up to you. For the sake of this exercise, I'm choosing clockwise as positive. So any kind of motion that is moving clockwise would be positive. Any motion moving counterclockwise, anticlockwise would be considered negative. It's a convention. You choose it. Okay. So now let's see how we apply even these directions. So L B final, we are, we've already seen what is the angular momentum of this ball. It is the inertia of the ball, uh, the final velocity of the ball, okay? And remember this, it bounces and then it, it comes back, right? And it, and it bounces back with a velocity of um, one quarter VB, okay? So it's coming back this way. So let's put that in. So M times, so now it's VB over 4, because the final velocity is a quarter of the initial velocity. So there is my momentum. Now I need to multiply by a lever arm, and we can see the lever arm is D. All right. So now this is the, this is the magnitude side of this angular momentum. So the question now is, this direction, or when it's moving in this direction, does this ball cause a positive or a negative angular momentum? Is it traveling in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction? What would you say? What, what is your answer? Well, it is traveling in a clockwise way, right? It's traveling in a clockwise way clockwise or, uh, orientation okay so that means that this is plus so it's traveling in clockwise now minus what was our initial angular momentum for the ball it would be m ball v ball again times d uh, but it would be traveling it would cause a a counterclockwise rotation so I need to put a minus so it's minus minus does that make sense please make sure that you can understand this that that idea there okay so we now we got our angular momentum for the ball what about the angular momentum for the door okay so we got plus what is the final angular momentum for the door? Um, so I'm just going to rewrite it here. Remember that it's I omega is the angular momentum for 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 this door. Well, in in this kind of um, representation. So, but what is I for the door? So if you go, I can't remember exactly where I've put it now. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so. We can approximate the door by, say, a, um, say a, a rod. It looks like that. And remember, if the axis of rotation um, is around the center, then it's 1 over 12. But if we, if we say that the axis of rotation is around the end, then it becomes 1 third ml squared. Right? So the axis of rotation is around the edge, so we can say the I part is one third M door L door squared, right? The length of door, so it's one 
third m d l d squared. Now, is it positive or negative? It's rotating like this, right? So it is positive. So we that's fine there. Minus, I'm just going to put that down here, minus your initial uh, angular momentum of the door. Again, it takes the same equation here. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot this. Very important. That's what we're looking for, is this omega final. So... Uh, so now we've, we again we've got one third m d l d squared omega initial, but is so our assumption actually is that both before and after the door is traveling in a clockwise way. So this is just going to be minus plus. So it stays like that. All right, and then this equals zero. Great. So now I've got everything here. Remember that's a minus bracket minus, so this becomes this quantity plus that quantity plus this quantity minus this quantity. So we've got a, an omega initial here, and we've got we've got an omega initial here, an omega final here. The question was what is the final rotational speed omega final? So now we've got everything here. Remember, there's no numbers, there's no values. All we have it is in variable form or um, symbol form. So all you need to do is go and solve for this omega, and you will get this guy. Okay? Let's go solve for that omega. The important thing here is to, first of all, I say understand that we the way to approach this is conservation of angular momentum. Okay? And the second thing that we needed to learn was that, well, we first needed to set up our system. The second thing we needed to learn was that even an object moving in a straight line can have an angular momentum of the system. Then we, we said this, delta L, B plus delta L, D is zero, final minus initial, final minus initial. Then we needed to understand what uh, angular di or direction means. How do we determine the direction, positive or negative? Okay. And then finally, we just, just solve for omega final. Rearrange this and solve for this and you get this. Okay. B, what must the speed of the ball be at impact? If you want the door to swing away from you after the ball hits. Okay. So the, the door is swinging and then it reaches this position as the ball hits it and then immediately it goes back. It swings back. Okay. So what must the speed of the ball be uh, so that it just it rebounds and immediately turns back? Well the, one, well, the way that we can solve this is by seeing that it is up until this point. First of all, please try that. Try it yourself. Up until this point its rotation was positive okay so it had an a, a omega initial that was greater than zero but then um, as it hits the ball it immediately rebounds and its omega final becomes zero sorry it becomes less than zero it begins to rotate in the negative direction so once we've sol we've solved for this guy we can just simply say Omega final, if we're trying to find this velocity here, okay, uh, that that it needs to be so that it, it rebounds like this, all we say is, well, omega final needs to be smaller than zero. Okay? So then you've got this omega initial minus 15 over 4 mbvbd over m d l d squared and we set that equal uh, smaller than zero and we solve for v b rearrange and you solve for v b and this is our our the velocity of the ball needs to be greater than this quantity here so whatever these values were it needs to be greater than that in order to 
have a momentum, an angular momentum large enough to cause this door to um, switch direction. Okay, hope that helps.